Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and the next video in my weapon review series is going to be Kate Sith. And for anybody who knows, I'm a huge fan of Kate Sith, and not really because of the actual character, I mean, I do find him to be very interesting, but I really liked the way his kit works, mostly because it, it threw in um, a bit of just a twist to what we were normally used to seeing. And so, if you don't know, or if you don't use Kate Sith much, his entire mechanic, very similar to how he played in Final Fantasy VII originally, is very luck-based, a very chance-based. So, a lot of his weapons are like, in the best case scenario, when you hit the crit and you get the secondary activation on the C ability, are amazing, right? They'd be overpowered in some ways if, if it didn't require a crit. However, because it does, uh, it makes it, um, I don't know, like I said, kind of fun to play when you're on your own, but not consistent in a way that, you know, <laughs> I, I, I feel like you kind of are banging your head against the wall sometimes to get his stuff to work. And especially in, you know, some dungeons and stuff where you have to do multiple fights, uh, you know, that becomes kind of a, a headache. Um, we'll go over his, his weapons. I did do, uh, you know, I think a review over almost all of these when he came out not too long ago, but it's been a while, so I am going to kind of review these. And, you know, because this is a fun one for me because I really like Kate. So, uh, we'll start with Marching Horn and um, Stalwart Braver... Braver Stalwart Bravery is the C ability. Physical attack increase, potency high starting at OB6, uh, also gives some regen and heal. I think that is an extremely useful ability, but what this weapon has become extremely noteworthy for is the fact that it's got a plus 62 heal stat in his R ability. This weapon is used as a sub weapon like as many times as I can possibly fit it in for healers right? Uh, this is just insane. Buff debuff extension, also really good for healers, especially because now, like with Kamura Wand and other things, um, you're doing, you know, usually a heal and giving your team buffs. So 26 points to this is pretty good. I mean, even as a sub weapon, you're looking at 13 points. That's 40% and you're right on the cusp of get, getting that 80% duration to your buffs. Uh, makes this weapon really good. Uh, nothing else really that fancy about it. I do think, you know, if if you're only going to get like one copy, uh, still 40 heal is pretty damn good. So I do think it's still viable as a sub weapon, uh, but it really starts to shine as you get it kind of leveled up. Uh, moving along, I'm going to talk about the next weapon that does kind of the, the other half of the battle horn, only it's better, I think, in a lot of ways, uh, and that is Flower Vase. So at OB10, you're looking at magic attack to a single ally increasing by high potency for a pretty great 38 second duration, also giving them regen, also giving them a small heal, and then this here is the busted part of this weapon. Now, obviously, this is where that uh, chance stuff starts to come into play, but 20%, one out of five times when you cast this, you will give that ally haste. For 20 seconds at OB10, not, I mean, that's that's a pretty big thing. I will say I don't think buff extension works on the haste, which is unfortunate, but would also be, I think, highly, highly broken. But when you get the haste effect applied, I mean, you really see the difference in your limit bar, your ATB bar fill, uh, and it really can allow you to get off a lot of extra moves, especially when you're doing something where, um, you know, you're trying to get a high score or, you know, it really matters to do even more damage in a fixed amount of time. Uh, the R abilities are also very, very nice for making this a great sub weapon. 62 points to magic attack, ex extremely high. And then also stacking with it the magic ability potency for 39. Um, I mean, wow, what a weapon, what a weapon. What uh, is killing Kate at the moment is that although, you know, he's got a huge R ability for a heal stat and he's a great utility character, just with these two weapons we've talked about alone, he has at this moment no AoE heal ability. And that really, really hurts him at the moment. Hopefully they fix that. Um, kind of switching gears from utility to uh, big daddy DPS is yellow megaphone. And, you know... I, I think I've actually, uh, we'll talk about in another video how, you know, 
um, the Zack weapon, I uh, can't remember what it's called, maybe the Ceremonial Sword that does, you know, an insane amount of damage, or Cloud's Bat that does insane amount of damage. You were looking at 14 and 1600% respectively. Uh, Sonic Meow, the sea ability for Yellow Megaphone, can blow everything else out of the water. 700% physical non-elemental damage, but, uh, and this is another theme with Kate, because he is chance-based and a lot of his chances require crits, a lot of his weapons have a higher crit rate than anybody else. Um, multiple of them have 20%. This one, though, is the highest at 30% crit rate. It's a big deal. Uh, also, when hitting a crit, times 3 damage. That's 2,100% physical non-elemental damage if this weapon crits. And yeah, I don't know if you've looked up any of the videos from other content creators on YouTube. Uh, there, were, there were whales that got this built with a crit build coming out that were doing insane amounts of damage. I'm talking like double the damage of your best summon, okay, even when they're against a weakness kind of damage. Like 200, 300k, I think there's probably even way higher ones. I don't even know what the highest one is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was in the 300 to 500k range. I mean, it's, it's truly insane. Now, obviously, uh, the problem with it is the R abilities, I mean, boost ability potency helps this, boost attack helps this, but they're not super conducive, right? You you really are trying to get physical attack and physical ability potency and crit potency. It's really kind of hard. You have to have a very particular set of weapons start up to really make this crit shine, like if you're trying to hit the, the numbers that I was just talking about. Uh, for materia stuff here, it, it doesn't have anything fancy. It's just basically... You know, kind of Mimi, but honestly, it can also potentially get you through some content uh, if you were struggling, if you can land a couple of these. So I think that's uh, it's it's pretty cool and it's pretty fun to play because everybody likes to see big numbers. Um, the next one here, Bloom and Spray. Uh, uh, the sea ability is called Bloom and Spray. This is, it's the aptly named Green Megaphone. Um, it's just, you know, one of those weapons like that, that does both the breach and the elemental damage, which makes it very, very nice. Uh, this was something we didn't see for a long time, but when it started coming out, it made all other breaches seem bad, <laughs> unless you could do multiple things with them. Uh, it's also got water potency, which is pretty nice. It's got a sigil boost, which kind of is, is great, but it's kind of out of nowhere because not many of his weapons have those. Battle Trumpet, this is a weapon that like, I can't really like fully recommend, Although it's very interesting because again, it's got a 20% crit rate. It does magic attack decrease potency mid to all enemies, which is very nice. Very Kuja Spirit Blade like. Uh, and when hitting a crit, also takes the physical attack down, potency high, duration 60 seconds, which is like forever, basically. Um, assuming you have any amount of debuff extension. But the fact that it's only one in five just makes it to where, you know, um, you can't count on it, okay? And so while a magic attack decrease mid to all enemies is still on its own, not useless, um, man, if you could hit this physical attack with it and they're susceptible to both, let's just say, uh, it's a pretty amazing weapon in that right. But ultimately, I think most players are gonna want more consistency than that. And so, you know, I would, I would definitely not be going for this item most likely, or this weapon. Uh, Fat Cat Attack is another one of these. Uh, it's a Fire Breach, right? And when hitting a critical, it also takes down their magic attack. Uh, potency high again, 60 seconds, which is insane. But it's only one out of five times that you're going to hit that. However, the Fire Breach alone uh, is pretty good. And, you know, when you're using him as a Breacher, the fact that there's always this other chance for this other thing to happen uh, just makes it really useful. If he could heal, again... Man, I think he would be super useful. The other weapon that is probably noteworthy that I do not possess because I didn't pull and it came out very recently is the Kina Megaphone. Uh, what it does is a physical attack increase for your whole party. It's potency high at OB10, which is very nice. Also does a heal, but it's only 7% of healing potency. And if your HP is 70% or higher, it also gives a physical defense buff potency high to the whole team. So, I mean, very similar to like 
Kamura Wand in that regard, right? Because Kamura Wand is physical attack and magical defense. This is physical attack and physical defense. Um, man, if it was magic attack and physical defense, that would be extremely powerful. And I do think that this is a great weapon. The only thing for me is it kind of overlaps with a lot of stuff that he has. If you're not familiar with his limit breaks, one of them does a, I believe, mid potency um, attack and magic attack up, physical attack and magical attack up to the entire party. So, you know, using a weapon like that Kena Megaphone is like, well, now that that limit does, I, I don't have any use for that. Um, also, the fact that, you know, if you're using that, if you're using Marching Horn, you know what I mean? They kind of overlap. Obviously, it's a great weapon, but I just didn't feel that it was a must have. Uh, what would I go for if I were trying to use vouchers for Kate? I think it's probably either Marching Horn, Flower Vase, or Yellow Megaphone. Uh, with a very, for me, I think. I look at him more of a utility support character, so Flower Vase would probably be my number one go-to. And Yellow Megaphone, again, if you want to build that crit up, that, that is viable. However, I think if you're not at least at OB6, you're not going to see the impressive numbers, so just know that uh, one or two copies is not really going to shine for you. Well, that's everything I have with uh, Kate Sith. And I'm really hoping uh, we think he's going to be featured on one of the anniversary banners. And I'm really, really interested to see what they give him. I'm hoping it's an AOE heal. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.